Hello friends and welcome to another video. I am joined once again by Alex to help you teach, to help learn some stuff I'm teaching. You guys are learning. Uh, hello, <laughs> Alex. Hey, good to see you. Thank you guys uh, for having me on again. I'm so excited to learn more from the master of supporting himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the master this time has to say, today we're gonna talk about effective spell usage in the lane. So our last video, we talked about Crystal Maiden spells. We broke them down. Same thing here, we're gonna focus on Crystal Maiden, but you can really apply these concepts to everyone. So what I started to notice watching some of these replays that I, I get sent is that sometimes the spell uses in the lane are kind of random and they don't make much sense to me. Um, and to be fair, no one really tells you this is how you're supposed to use the spell or like these are the scenarios. So that's kind of what this is aimed at. We're gonna hit Alex with some scenarios and ask him like, should you use a spell or not here? And I hope you guys you know, try to answer these questions as well yourself before Alex does. And then, you know, see if what you think lines up and then I'll provide what I think is the correct answer debatably, you know, the pressure's maybe. on for me, man. <laughs> I gotta get these right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, if you get it wrong, it's just improvement, That's right? Good. There you yeah, go. Yeah, and I get to learn, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing, we kind of talked about this in uh, the last video a bit, um, but go ahead and hit these guys with a Crystal Nova. Sure, I'll learn it first and I'll hit them. So if we pause real quick and take a look, Crystal Nova does just about 100 damage, a little less. It's like uh, 97 technically because of the uh, the base magic resistance. And so on these heroes, we can see that, you know, got Axe down to about 600 and Ogre down to about 560. This is pretty common. People will use spells to harass and they'll just throw it out. And I think that's very, like if you just started playing the game or if you've played for a while, but never like thought about it too hard, it's like, okay, you use spells for damage. But I actually think, you know, don't do not do that, actually. Um, that should just be one of the reasons, and then there should be other reasons you use the spell as well. And the main reason you don't want damage to be your only reason is because you have auto attacks. So Alex, go ahead and hit Axe a couple times and see how many it takes to get him down to about 600 health. So one, two, three. Three auto attacks to get Axe down to, coincidentally, we're at 605 again. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. This might vary a little bit because melee heroes have innate damage block, 50% chance. So, you know, you may get a little unlucky, get some extra blocks in, maybe get lucky. Uh, in the end, it averages out. And it took Alex three auto attacks to do the same amount of damage as Crystal Nova. So your auto attacks are free. They don't take very long, right? Three auto attacks, that wasn't too fast, too slow. On, honestly, I'm actually, it's silly, but in my head, I actually thought it was gonna take longer than that. Like those three auto attacks, like her attack speed isn't even that slow. Mm -hmm. Like kind of took them down rather quickly. That's like, that's a pretty easy harass. You know what I mean? Exactly. Three auto attacks, like it's okay. It's rare that you get to just auto attack like that back to back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but when you do, like it really isn't that long. It's like three seconds and you did the same damage. Heck, Crystal Nova would still have been on cooldown in that time. So now go ahead and hit Ogre. And so it was the same about 100 damage, so we're looking to get down to 560. Three, four, five auto attacks this time. Why? It's because he has different armor. So Ogre has seven armor, Axe has two. Ogre also has pretty high base health regen, although Axe also happens to have buffed up HP regen. So compared to most heroes, so like Lina, she's got two. Crystal Maiden, she has 1.8. Um, many heroes do not. Ogre and Axe happen to both have pretty high base health regen, but armor, which increases your physical resistance, and then combined with the fact that you're actually regening quite quick, uh, quickly, means that you're gonna have to take more auto attacks to deal damage to someone with high armor. But still, five auto attacks is not that bad, um, if you think about it. But so, still, the, the impact of the armor is really significant. Like, that's actually kind of surprising, honestly. Like, yeah. We're talking 19 damage versus 42. It's basically half damage. Some got that's blocked, probably. Yeah, some got but, blocked, probably. But yeah, I'm just so, like, that, Ogre like, has 30% physical resist. Axe has 12%. So you're pretty much doing 20% more damage. Yeah, it, like, it's very significant. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, and so that's why, like, if you're just thinking about damage on spells, it's, like... 
not that great guys like you should just use auto attacks a lot of this time so we're gonna hold on to that idea we're gonna switch tracks a little bit but i swear it's all gonna tie in together these next couple ideas i'm gonna talk about this like danger zone idea so right now alex you're full health you yes. feel like you can play the game right you can play in the lane because you're not about to die yet you're at full health yes right so like if i hit you once how do you feel now I'm fine. I'm good. I'm fine, right? Because you're mostly full health. <laughs> Two? I'm still good. Three? Four? I'm not bad. Getting nervous. Five? I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. everyone has this feeling, right? Where you're sitting at full health and you're like, I'm, I'm invulnerable. You know, I've got so much health. That's yeah. usually true. You can be killed like 100 to zero. But usually at level one, that's not so, so common. And even in the first early levels, it's a little difficult to die when you're at full health. But everyone starts to realize as, you know, you take four or five, however many auto attacks, you start to feel uncomfortable. And you start to realize you can, in fact, die in this game. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it only took me five auto attacks to get Crystal Maiden down to half her health. Now, of course, I am, you know, Ogre's a melee hero. She's ranged. So it's much more complicated than just saying, oh, go hit her five times. Mm -hmm. But... The point is, there is this idea of a danger zone where you can play the lane freely until you reach this point. And if you don't have any regen and you're at this point, you suddenly become very scared to play the lane. You can't, you know, help your carry out because you're scared. You're like, they're going to hit me. They're going to kill me. Exactly. Even though you're not dead, you are getting close to useless because, you know, right now you're still like pretty healthy. But if I get you even lower... You know, you can't even, like, at this point, it's extremely scary for you to walk into lane. Like, yeah. you'll probably just die if I, if both of us throw a stun or a spell yeah, like on you. Fire blast or something. Yeah, I'm yeah you're actually just dead. And so even though you're yeah. not dead, really, you are dead. Because if you walk yeah. in, you're dead, which means you can't do yeah, anything ignite, here. Yeah, Ignite and Battle Hunger kills me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, it is difficult. Right? There's so many heroes in this game. It's difficult to know how much damage every enemy can do. Um, so, like, I wouldn't expect you to know the exact amount of damage Ogre can output with his spells and axe. Because, like, sometimes it's not going to be Ogre. It's going to be Clockwork. And then you have to do a different math calculation. Be like, okay, like, these two heroes, how much damage? Oh, it's a Pugna now. Like, how much damage? It, no one knows all of those by heart. But everyone should have a general feeling of, like, okay, around here I start to feel scared. So what everyone should know about their own hero, though, is to realize, okay, this is how much attack or spell damage I have between my offensive spells, but then how many, how much damage your auto attacks can get in. So on Axe, go ahead and what you're going to do, you're going to attack once, cast Q, attack twice, cast W, attack twice. Oh, man, that, that was like Simon Says. Hold on. <laughs> Five auto attacks, okay. both your spells. Okay. Huh. On Axe? Yep. You want to get Ogre out of there? I'll back him up a little bit. Go ahead. Go for All it. All right, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. You don't need to know the exact number, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's for nerds. But you can get a feeling like, oh, that was about half his health, you know, at this stage yeah, in the game. Yeah, literally half his health. One, yeah. of the, one of the tankiest guys in the game at level uh, two. Mm -hmm. And honestly, yeah. it doesn't take much more than a feeling you know do this a couple times in a lobby try it out with different heroes and then you start to get this this feeling of like mm, okay axe like imagine you're at axe right now does he know let's say you didn't take this damage from the spells like right there right he just took some auto attacks he's at this point does he realize that you can do this much damage on your own he may not because it's hard to know what every other hero can do in the game so he may start to feel like okay I, i'm a little scared but like i don't think crystal maiden can kill me if you know your hero's damage well, you can capitalize on other people not understanding your hero. Mm -hmm. So right now, 100%. by doing these kind of exercises, you now understand that, oh, I've got both these spells. You know, let's say you had them. Let me turn on this uh, cheat here. I think you're still a little low. Type dash refresh so you have your mana. Um, but if you know your damage, then when Axe starts to get a little low, you can realize, oh, I can actually almost go for a kill here. So right now, Crystal Maiden alone probably couldn't kill Axe. 
But if you have no. a carry to add in like one or two auto attacks, when you use your spells together, like, so go for it, go for the kill. In fact, just do it by yourself. You know, Axe, he's like, oh no, I'm gonna die. Like, what do I do? Like, he may get away here, but look how close he came to dying. 50 health he had. If your carry helps once, or if creeps attack a little bit, this guy is just dead. And so it's really important to know your own spells, how much damage they can deal. And so like Crystal yeah. Maiden, I think many people underestimate how much damage her two spells can do. Of course, it costs a lot of mana, so you need to have mangoes. Yeah. Um, but compared to a lot of other heroes, their two spell combos, and if you didn't watch the first video, you should check it out. But I listed a couple of other of heroes there and their like two spell combos and how much damage they did. Crystal Maiden is one of the higher um, with her level two spells. And, yeah, and oh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but like, but for people who might not have watched, you gotta watch it. But one of the things you spoke <laughs> about was like how scary like Avalanche into tosses with Tiny. Yeah, and, exactly. Like this combo is not even that much off it, really. Um, yeah. So and that's the funny thing. It's like people think of Crystal Maiden as this heal bot, and you can take advantage of it if you thought about this before. Then like that's great. This is a, a learning opportunity. Crystal Maiden can kill you level two. Many people don't appreciate that. They think she doesn't have that much damage. So Axe, like offlane players will think, oh, it's just a Crystal Maiden. Like, I'm not gonna die at level two. Like, I'll keep playing <laughs> aggressively. And that's when you just like sneak up along the side and you're like, hey, Carrie, go hit this guy. I'm gonna, we're gonna kill him right here. You use two mangoes maybe if you have to, but you get a kill, you buy yourself more mangoes. <laughs> you know, yeah. these guys, it's a uh, free kills if you know your total damage output. So to tie all this together, those last three uh, topics, I want you to think of it like a fighting game combo counter where in the beginning to get people down to the danger zone, you want to just use auto attacks if possible. It depends on your spells. Uh, we're not going to cover all the different nuances here, but in yep. general, don't use too many spells at the beginning. Just try to use your auto attacks and whittle them down and know that you are competing with their regen, right? If this guy had a tango, if he had regen, like he's going to get back up to uh, like as I'm talking, we're watching his health go up. He's not feeling so scared. He's still full health. But if you keep adding in an auto attack here and there, you start to approach this danger zone point. And now you can commit for a kill. And now it becomes very effective to use your spells here. Now that you've committed auto attacks to get him down, free auto attacks, now you use your resources to go for the kill. And the reason I'm comparing it to a fighting game combo counter is because if you don't keep up the harass, you lose that opportunity because he's eventually just going to heal up. So when you start to harass, you kind of have to keep at it, uh, kind of like those combos in fighting games. All right, next topic is uh, the tower. So right here, I'm pressing space so you guys can see it. This is the tower range, and no one should walk under tower in the early levels. It's just not... Okay, that's not true. There are, there are going to be cases where you can tower dive, but in general, you really don't want to because the tower does a lot of damage. So Alex, when you're out here and Ogre starts running at you, do you want to fight him? Not really. Because no. he is stronger than you, pretty much. But yeah, as we, you we approach... Not man an ogre. Yeah, exactly. He's got way more armor and all that. But as you... Oops. <laughs> wrong button. As you reach this point, he cannot approach you. Because if he goes a step further, he will be under the tower. And he's going to lose that trade. You know, Even though he beat you, you plus the tower definitely beat Ogre Magi. So even if you were to stand like right here... You're safe because I cannot hit you. What that means when it comes to spell usage is that sometimes you people get scared of, they don't want Ogre to get on top of them. So they'll use a spell to keep him away. But you really don't need to do that if you're close to this tower. It's like this, uh, this game of chicken because if I approach you, you just walk under there and I go like, oh, hey, you want to come back out? I want to, I want to hit you, you know? But you're not. I can and hit you, you though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can hit him. It's this free game. And so if you have this tree cut here, what you should do, so come stand out here. So if sure. you guys are playing position five and the four support is being aggressive to you in this area, try not to use your spells because you're so close to the tower. The tower is your free safety zone. And you walk back under the tower. And then when he starts to walk away, now you come auto attack him again. And then he goes, oh, Crystal Maiden's leaving the tower. I'm coming back. And then Crystal Maiden, what she do? She just goes back into the tower. Look at this. Alex has it, right? It's like, oh, okay, I got to leave again. You know, I can't go into the tower. And then Crystal Maiden comes out. She's like, oh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go get Crystal Maiden. 
Oh, just kidding. No. It's just this very simple game of chicken. And you just play with the tower. And so when you're close to the tower, you do not need to use spells to prevent Ogre from getting on top of you. But if, and this is probably why it's so valuable to have a pulled lane. <laughs> there, there you go. Um, now walk up here, Alex. Sure. Let's say Alex is up here. Now it becomes more reasonable to use a spell, especially if Alex were a little lower, say not at full health. Um, as Ogre gets on top of you, now like maybe you use a spell because look how far you have to run back to get to tower. It's a bit more of, a, of an issue. So the further you are from your tower, the more reasonable it is to use a spell. The closer you are to your tower, the less likely you should have to use a spell. So if you're using a spell under your own tower, that's pretty wasteful. Unless Ogre is literally under the tower and then you can like go ahead and root the guy or slow yeah. him because then like you now trapped him under the tower. That is extremely effective spell usage. Uh, just like Alex showed you there. Next topic, <laughs> Crystal Nova has a slow attached to it. So let's say you don't want Axe to get on top of you. Actually, let me ask, why don't you want Axe to get on top of you, Axe? Well, if he, ca if he calls me, I'm in big trouble. Yeah, if he calls you, sure. But just let's say you just trade right clicks. Is it good for you if he's right on no. top of you? No, he has like double the armor. He has uh, way more attack damage. Like, no, he takes me out for sure. Yeah, and this applies for like any melee hero. Like Even if you have similar stats, because melee heroes have that damage block, you just don't want them to be on top of you. Um, you much prefer, like you're a ranged hero, you want to chip at them from afar. So let's say you see Axe running at you. When is the best time to use a spell? Let's say you have to use it. Let's say, what is the best time to use a spell? So I'm going to run Axe at you, and you cast a spell when you think it's the best time. Okay. So why'd you choose that, that time? To be honest with you, I was singing a little too hard. I, I was trying to see if I could sneak an auto attack in before having to cast Nova, and I don't think I could. I think with the closing speed you had, I don't think I could have snuck an auto attack in. Can we try that one more time? I want to check. Yeah, sure. Ready? Yeah. I'm coming, okay, so you stay on... Oh, let me move him out. Alex yeah. has this weird bug, guys, where like he cannot stop auto attacking. We tried changing yeah, the settings. The, the man is obsessed with auto attacks. He just can't help himself. I want to harass. It's all I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. That's kind of what I was going for, but you could have called me there. You could yeah, have I could have. Uh, if not called, I could have gotten an auto attack in. And yeah. uh, I so was let's just... do that again, knowing now that I cannot auto attack while you're closing. Sure. Again, we're learning here, right? Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's okay. a great thought to try to see if, like, can I fit in an auto attack first? That is the the right and idea. We can. Okay, ready? Yeah. That's so about that time... the space I'm comfortable with. <clears throat> a little further, right? So the thing yeah. is, so come stand by that ward again. What I want you guys to remember, if your spell has like a slow kind of like Crystal Nova, casting it at max range is actually not effective because when you cast it at max range like this, say you cast at max range, Axe goes, oh, I'm slowed. I don't really want to fight. I turn around. And you don't really get to make use of the slow from your spell to kite them because they were at max range. So maybe you get one auto attack off, but you have to stand still to auto attack. And even though he's slowed, he gets away from your range in that time. So you only get the one. And of course, you don't want him to get right on top of you. That's bad as well. So you want to aim for this middle ground. Um, it, it's kind of dictated by your attack range. So like here's Crystal Main's attack range. So you want to kind of cast a spell around here, and then you're going to make two choices. You're, if you see Axe continue to chase you, you'll make use of that slow and run away. And if you see Axe turn around because he's been hit by a spell and slowed, then you turn around and you keep chasing Axe. So for example, I'm going to run at you, Alex. And if I keep chasing you, then you should turn around and run, okay? okay? And if I turn around, then you should harass me, okay? Okay. Perfect. All right. Got and we'll do it again. Once I, once I was roughly at about uh, the tower, I felt confident enough to be able to auto attack. Yeah, that was exactly what you should do. You make use of the slow to get away. But if they get scared, then you get to chase, and because he's slowed, look, Alex is able to fit in multiple auto attacks here, and four. only after that I... was four attacks. Four. I was expecting four. Yeah. Which is the same no damage as Crystal Nova that we discovered earlier, that about three auto attacks is the same damage as Crystal Nova. So you kind of doubled your returns there. Instead of just getting Crystal Nova damage, you got it 
and auto attacks. And, and the harasser got harassed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah. So it, it'll vary a bit. So like someone like Clockwork, you definitely don't want him to get on top of no, you because he has a no. really powerful spell. Other heroes, like it's not so scary. Like Nyx, right? He can kind of get on top of you and he like, he doesn't hit that hard. So it's not that worrisome. But you should have this general feeling of like, I want to try to make use of the spell. So what is the latest I can use my spells to get away if need be? And if I don't have to get away, then I can actually make use of it aggressively. You have a choice to use it one way or the other next topic because of trees what can happen let's say you don't know axe is here pretend you didn't see me just put him here let's say alex walks up to around here he's just looking for the enemy and suddenly axe is here so you now have a choice to use your spells q or w which do you think you should use w why w because you're right on top of me and i want you to not move at all <laughs> that's pretty good um, your W happens to also disarm me so that yes, even yes, if I cast a spell, I can't actually trade with you. So like walk up to here again, and then if you cast W, like I actually don't get to auto attack and you get away. Um, yeah. And it can also throw people a little off where they like don't expect it. Um, but like you said, if you got rooted, I would still get to auto attack once or twice or maybe even cast a spell. But by, um, by, by rooting first, so that was, I think that's the correct option. Um, when they suddenly pop up on top of you, you kind of have to, you know, stun or root and get away. At least if you're a fragile hero. You know, if you're pretty tanky, then, like, you don't have to. Uh, but something like Crystal Maiden, she definitely does not want Axe to get in these free auto attacks. So I think the root is the correct choice. Next question. Against a ranged hero, especially if they're shorter range than you, um, when should you use a spell? So let's say, pretend you're level one. Let's say you just have Crystal Nova. I'm going to come attack you. You decide when to use your spell, okay? Okay. And your goal here is to try to trade and harass with me. Okay. I got a couple hits there. Got a couple hits in. So, that was, partly, that was my bad. I was a little slow on the reaction there. Um, <laughs> what you did was you started with a spell right away. Yeah, as soon as you started approaching me, I kind of hit you early. Mm -hmm. The downside with that is that if someone <laughs> with better reaction times than me, apparently, gets hit with a spell, and they decide, okay, you know what, I, got, I just took some damage, I'm slow, I'm just going to leave, and they just back off. And then, in this case, I walked in further before reacting, so Alex was able to get in a couple of auto attacks. But if I had turned around immediately and, say, cut into these trees, suddenly Alex doesn't really get to make use of that movement speed because he can't see me and because I am out of his range. So instead... What you should try to do is wait till you see, if you think you can uh, win the trade, you know, if you think you're gonna horribly lose, then don't do this. But if you think you can win the trade, wait to see them commit to this, enter their own attack range, which is shorter than yours, and then use your spell. So wait till I actually attack you and then use your spell and then keep chasing me for damage, okay? Okay. Why is she attacking? I don't know why. I think you were in range, though. I get it. Yeah. The point is, <laughs> some technical <laughs> difficulties. The point is, when you're that close and you get hit, the enemy has two choices. They keep fighting while affected by this attack slow. That's not very good for them. Or they run away. But because they are slowed and because you have a longer attack range, they have a much easier time, you have a much easier time kiting me, getting in some extra damage. So, like, both options for Dark Willow are, like, lose-lose. Um, whereas when you cast a spell immediately, if I had reacted faster, right, Dark Willow gets away and she doesn't take too much damage and you didn't really get to get in extra auto attacks, which as we've discussed, those are where the actual damage comes in. Like that's where you really start to rack up the damage. To uh, end the video, we're just going to go through a couple questions and uh, let me know what you think. And then, you know, <laughs> nice little casual talk. So okay. is it worth securing last hits with spells? Yeah, I'd say yeah, it is. Which ones? Um, well, in the case of Crystal Maiden, I would uh, use Crystal Nova to secure a range creep. Would you? Oh, ever... I should add. I should add. Sorry, I should add securing the range creep while trying to maximize Crystal Nova's effectiveness by also hitting the two heroes at the same time. That's there we go. I'm sorry, pretty good. Would you use it on melee creeps? Um, no, but I mean, if if there was multiple melee, no, because I don't think I would, because I wouldn't want to steal farm from my carry. 
So no, I would say no. I'm not using it on melee creeps unless I know my carry cannot get it. And there's, I, I'm just gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I would say that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. We the range creep at this point, eh, some carries won't know, but it's getting there where more carries realize that okay, part of the support's job is to make sure the range creep is secured, so they're not gonna lose their minds if you take the last hit. You know, if you get a melee creep though, they're gonna like start being like, "What are you doing?" And like you said, we don't actually want to take the farm or push the wave too much. Um, and then you should also, of course, try to, you know, get the harass in if you can. Okay. You mentioned that you would use Crystal Nova. Yes. Why, how come, let's say a range creep, why aren't you using Frostbite? Oh, I mean, I'd use Frostbite in later stages of the game. Oh, wait. No, I'd use Frostbite in neutrals, but I wouldn't use Frostbite in lane because of the risk of it being denied. Is that wrong? Because, I mean, it's it's going to it's gonna have damage that immediate the way crystal nova is so like they could watch you tick down into deny range and just deny it yes so frostbite actually happens to do like a lot of damage pretty quickly it's like um because it's like a thousand damage in 10 seconds the ticks are pretty fast um but like other spells like uh jakiro's so technically his q does 110 damage but it's over time and so that makes it easier you know you try to you see a creep at like 50 health you use your spell but then the enemy still has time to get the last hit in Crystal Nova, because it's a, a nuke spell, all the damage comes out at once, so it's really good at actually securing. So if you compare like an auto attack to Crystal Nova, an auto attack, let's say like Ogre, he's got like 67 damage right now, he's level 5. Your level 1 Q is 130 damage. So if you both go for a last hit, let's say the creep is at, like if the creep is at 80 health, you he can't even deny it yet because he would take two auto attacks, so you would secure it. If the creep is at like 50 health, Technically, if he hits first, he'll get it. But the the Nova is instant when you cast it, and it does enough damage. So using nukes is much better for securing last hits rather than damage over time spells. Second question. Would you use a spell to interrupt a pull? Let's say Ogre was trying to pull this camp over here. No. Why not? I would use an auto attack. I don't want to... Because if, if, he's, if he's pulling, I don't want to hit... I don't want to help his pull. Like if he's pulling and I nuke the 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 creep wave, all I'm doing is allowing my my lane to push. Like I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to nuke their creeps or the neutrals or anything. I want to auto attack and disrupt the pull, but I don't want to nuke it. No. Let me let me change that. Let's say he's like just here. He's like just starting the pull. He hasn't affected his oh. creeps yet. Would you use an auto attack or a rain, or a spell? Still. I would I would still save my man. I'd auto attack. And what if you're out of range? Is it then worth using a spell, do you think? Like, say you can't get the auto if attack he's not in. Yet, if he's not yet pulled, I don't think I would. You don't think you would? I'm use... not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm right. I don't <laughs> think I would. <laughs> I'm thinking now. No, I don't think I would. I think I would, I'd hold my mana. It's, it's honestly a little bit of a tough question. Um, I would say it's generally okay to use a spell to disrupt a pull. I like what you said. Like, if you can auto attack and do it, all the better, right? That's free. Um, but if you had to use a spell to try to disrupt a pull, I think it's usually okay. It comes down to a snap decision on like, okay, if they get this pull, is that really bad for us? Yes, it is really bad for us. I need to stop it. And if you need to stop it, it's okay to use a spell. If you can identify that like, oh, actually, I think this pull will benefit us, then yeah, I guess you don't need to use a spell. Like, <laughs> let them pull. It's going to help you out. But you're looking to like do something good for yourself. And if you think them pulling, and as a general rule for you guys, if you can't quickly decide like whether it's good or not, I would say as a general rule, as long as you have the mana to spare, um, and you're not like, I have to save the stun to prevent a, a dive or something, it's okay to use a spell to stop the enemy from pulling. Yeah, pulling's bad. <laughs> yeah. They're, them pulling is bad. Us pulling is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about the other way? Let's say you were running to this small camp over here and you're not going to get the auto attack in time is it worth using a spell to get the to like aggro them to start a pull no because if i crystal nova them they won't get out of the box in time because they're going to be slowed <laughs> that is would they would they get out of the box i don't think they would if, if i'm even half a second late i don't think they leave the box in time to try to pull not to stack oh to pull? Mm -hmm. I don't think I would either, no. Why not? 
because I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's not a valid reason. I just I don't think I would, and I don't think I'm right. I would say it's it's also I don't think I would. It's also going to depend a little bit, right? If you like don't really need to pull, then it's like okay, I'll save my mana. But like there are times where it's like I really need to get this pull off, and I would say you still have to say it depends. The problem with Crystal Nova, as it so happens, first off, it's going to slow. So you mention it, it's like, okay, well, maybe I won't even get this pull because the creep is slowed. So it's like, it's not even going to get to the, the uh, wave in time. The issue, the other issue, though, is that it does, uh, does a decent amount of damage. And so the idea of a pull is that you're going to get your own creeps killed off. But if you go and nuke the small camp to pull it, yeah. and they all arrive to the pull, like, uh, you know, short 130 health, or maybe you've even leveled up this spell... Then suddenly the pull is not so useful. Now some spells are a little better about this because they like they don't do much damage or they don't they don't slow or they don't stun. So I would say if you really need to get a pull off, it's okay to use a spell. Try to angle it so like you only hit one of the creeps. Um, because that will be enough to aggro the whole camp. And so like that one creep took a bit of damage and it's slow, but then like say the other two creeps, they'll run the same speed, so that'll make it possible to do the pull. And, uh, you know, the camp will have most of its health. You didn't just, like, nuke the full camp and then try to pull it. Well, you can avoid this by watching the damn clock. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. Last question. Okay. Pass or fail? This is everything. This is everything now. Is it Thanks worth it to use a spell to stack? Well, yeah. If you're saying that it's worth it to, to pull using a spell, then it must be worth it to stack using a spell, because if you're stacking with the intention of clearing it, then if you've done damage to them, it doesn't matter as long as they clear the box. Yeah. Any, yes. any other considerations Pat. on it? Uh, you said yes, so I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I would say... In general, it's worth using a spell to stack. Like you said, you plan on clearing it anyway, so you're like you don't care so much that you did damage to it. You do have to be a little careful, like the uh, slows and the stuns, making sure they get out of the box. Um, so that might be something worth practicing. Um, but in general, it's okay. Just be careful on your mana management. Uh, make sure yeah. you don't like need mana to like. Oh, we're about to team fight. Let me just blow all my mana stacking this small camp. Right? That's not going to be very helpful for your team. So make sure you have the mana to spare but if you do it can be worth it especially if you go for like a multi-stack so like you auto attack one camp and then you use a spell on another camp and now you <laughs> stack two that is also very efficient for mana use maybe a video for another day is you showing us how to do like phoenix dives into multiple camps and stacking them <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there'd be a lot there'd be a it'd be a lot of different unique heroes on different ways to stack yeah and uh Okay, that's actually it. That's all I had for my uh, my stuff. Do you have any other? Do you have any thoughts, questions? No, that's it for me. That's it for me. That's it for you. All right. Well then, I hope that was helpful for you guys. Think. I am not saying you have to have like, you don't have to write like a detailed explanation for every spell you use, but you should be able to come up with like, a uh, like a one <laughs> sentence answer, right? I ask you, why did you cast a spell? And you should say, hmm. I wanted to stun Clockwork so he didn't get on top of me and I got back to safety, right? Have a oh, reason. Clockwork getting on top of you is so bad. It's so I, bad. I, I, he I, I, He's I, someone with a very high damage level one, two combo. Yeah, just kidding. You know, but if, you, if you're one, your one sentence answer to me is like, I was just trying to do damage. That's no good, okay? <laughs> Make sure yeah, you're, exactly. I want like a bit more to, right? Like I was trying to slow him, get the damage in, sneak in a couple of auto attacks, that's great. That is maximizing the usage of your spells. Just hitting a guy with a spell is like, you know, it's lazy. It's not good mana management. And it leads to just like less effectiveness in the lane. So Less efficiency, yeah. Yeah. So give it a shot. Maybe pull up one of your replays, look at it, and try to explain. Like, why did I use this spell? If you realize you're using spells kind of like pointlessly, it's easy to fix. Um, just start thinking about like some of the stuff we talked about here and decide like, oh, this is a good time to use a spell. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, stay safe. Use your spells well. Goodbye. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.